you would, you'd be turning to the book of John, chapter 15, verse 1, before we start. Uh, it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, and I'm, I'm thankful that I'm able to be here uh, spiritually and physically. I can stand before you and read some of God's Word, and uh, maybe to those that are watching it out in the world, those that are on the Facebooks and wherever they're watching on the computers, that we can be a blessing to them too because uh, it's, a, it's a time when the world needs to hear God's Word and I hope that this morning that uh, this portion that I read will be a blessing to all those that hear it. In verse 1 of chapter 15 of the book of John, he's talking here concerning abiding. And there's, there's some scriptures here that uh, have been misused for years and years by people that don't understand security of the believer, that don't understand uh, that that which is born of God does not sin. We want to try to touch on those this morning. Jesus is talking to the disciples here, and as he's talking, remember he's talking to the eleven. John has already left. He's gone out. He took the sop and he left. He, he's, during this time, he's making a deal for Jesus' life. He's uh, uh, telling them how that he will uh, turn him over to them. So take, keep that in mind. But he says here, as he's talking to the disciples, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Now, I notice he, he starts out with I am, and if you wanted to look this I am up, if you remember over in Exodus, I think it's Exodus 3 or Exodus, yeah, I think Exodus 3, that Moses came to, Jesus, uh, to uh, God, and God told Moses, he said, I want you to go lead the people out of Israel, of, out of Egypt, I'm sorry, out of Egypt. And Moses said, well, now who am I to tell that told me to do this? And he said, and you say to them, I am that sent you. And so here Jesus is using the same I am. But now notice here in this, the, he using the father here as the husbandman. Now the husbandman is the one that oversees the working of the vineyard. And Jesus is is saying that he is the true vine. Now, if you would, if you would study, uh, wanted to study some about this, you could go back into uh, Isaiah five, and I, I would, I would that you would read this uh, or or understand it. But this is where this vineyard is is was created. Isaiah five one. Or it's where it tells it. But in Isaiah 5, 1, he says, Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my love, touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. He fenced it, and he gathered out the stones thereof, and planted it with the choicest vines, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein, and he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. So he says, And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, the men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could I have done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked, that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. Now, these, this grape, this vineyard started as the children of Israel were in captivity and went down to Egypt, and God called them out, and he started them on their way, and this is, this is the beginning, I, I think, of the, the vineyard that he's talking about, and he's trying to explain to us, because this vineyard represents the people that the Lord called and that the Lord saved. Now notice, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now, so many people today misinterprets this scripture. Now, notice, every branch in me that beareth fruit, he pruneth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, the one that he, that he says here, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. But notice here what, what he says about this branch. He says, that's in me. And so this morning, I, that, why I said to you that this scripture is misused so many times is that, that people will try to tell you that you can be saved and then lost, and, and they'll use this scripture here to try to prove it. Well, listen, it's not, they're taking it out of context because it's not, that's not the way it should be because notice here that anything that, that uh, this true vine and, and, the, and the branch in me is the one that is saved. Now, when what happens is this, this, this whole chapter is about abiding in Jesus Christ and abiding in the Father. Now, when you abide, you stay close, you seek his leadership, and you obey. Now, when, when people will not abide in, the, in Christ the Savior, and he has to take away their closeness to him, he has to take uh, his fellowship from them, and they cannot produce fruit. And so this, this morning is what we want to talk to you about. Now, he says here, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So again, this cleanliness here, this word, is what reveals the Lord Jesus Christ to sinners and what sinners read and what, how the Lord uses this to call those that are lost unto him. He says now in verse 4, Abide in me and I in you. So what he's saying this morning is, as James says, draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh to you. And here this word abide means to stay close to the Lord every day of your life that you can possibly. And listen, we know this morning that people get out of the will of the Lord and they, uh, they, they get away from him and the Holy Spirit deals with their hearts and with their souls and, and, and tells them what they have done wrong. And that, that teaching of, from the Holy Spirit brings us back into fellowship with the Lord. And we may, we may, we may uh, uh, flounder around quite a bit and not want not wanna to do what the Holy Spirit tells us. But listen, we will be brought back to the Lord because we are His. And listen, if... if if we don't, if we don't serve him, then he is not going to. We're not going to feel his free fellowship. And there's people this the day that has never bared fruit for the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet they're saved. And I've heard people say, "Well, I always see a person. I judge a person by the fruit he bears." Well, you can't do that because here he's saying here, uh, if if if. If you fall or if, if you don't bear fruit, if you don't bear fruit, he's not going to send you to hell. But the thing of it is, you're his child. And so this is this is the thing of it. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Now we if we are to bear fruit this morning, we have to depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where we get all of our help, all of our food supply, all of our substance that we can produce food or fruit to uh, other people. And he says here, he says, but this branch cannot bear fruit of itself. And in other words, this, this, this branch that's coming out, it cannot do it itself. I can't bear fruit by myself. I have to have the help of the Lord. I have to have the the word of the Lord, I have to have the Holy Spirit speaking to my soul, and I have to have these things, and I have to pray about these things, and I have to uh, try to stay in, as close to the Lord as I can. And so this is what he's talking about, abiding, being close to him, and we so many times put other things 
before the study of, the, of our word, before going to church, before uh, uh, tithing, before things like this. Listen, we are to, to do these things in order to stay close to the Lord. Yeah. And, and that, this morning, is, is a perfect life. That is a perfect way to stay close to the Lord and enjoy the Lord and depend upon Him and have faith in Him because so many times our faith gets weak and we doubt uh, what we're going, we, the Lord will do for us. But listen, if we abide, if we abide in the Lord and we serve Him each day and as we pray and as we uh, live this day, listen, the Lord is there with us. But now we don't need to get away from Him. So here's what, here again, He says in verse uh, 4, again, He says, uh, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. And so, if we don't abide, it's all about abiding. Now notice, I am, verse 5, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. So, abiding, the branch, you're the branch and the fruit, and it's all together, and they're all in harmony with the Lord Jesus Christ and with God. So if a man, notice in verse 6, and, and again, this is, the, this is the one where that uh, the, false, the false people, they, they've got it all wrong, and they think that you can fall from grace or that you can be saved and lost and saved and lost and saved. That don't happen. That which is born of God does not sin, and so he, we're talking spiritual, not physical. But he says in verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire. Notice, first of all, when people read this, they say, Yeah, men gather them like you do bushes and, and trees and stuff and throw it in the fire. But notice what he's saying here is, if a man abides, all right, but then if he don't, and men gather them. So listen, this morning, men cannot gather men and, 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 and punish them by casting them into the, the lake of fire. It's Jesus Christ, and he's trying to say to this, to his people, that you need to stay in harmony with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to abide close. But do not, I say, I, and I'm telling you, do not fear what man can do because man has no authority over your soul. Now, they may can punish your body and they may cause you problems, but no, no man that ever walked upon this earth, with the exception of Jesus Christ, has any power over your soul. He cannot touch you. Uh, Moses couldn't do it. Uh, 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 none of them could do it. But now he says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch. And what he's saying is this morning is that we're cast away from him. He pulls himself from us. He don't fellowship with us. And listen, we have to have that fellowship in order to be happy with the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to live in a way that is pleasing to Him. And if we don't, we don't have that fellowship. And, and it's a terrible, terrible life to live out of the will of the Lord. And I'm not saying if you do that, uh, that you'll die and go to hell. No. That's in the hands of the Lord. But I say this this morning. If you have been saved and you're truly saved, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to heaven. But the thing of it is, if you, if you lose fellowship with him or if you don't abide by him, listen, it's going to be a miserable life for you. And you're going to, you're going to be at uh, all time fearing what's going to happen to you and all this. But listen, when you have that fellowship with the Lord and you abide close to him, you can go to bed at night, lay down and sleep and say, Lord, I've served you this day. And I know uh, that if I die tonight, where I'm going, and listen, you have doubts when you don't abide with the Lord Jesus Christ where you're going. And, you know, I talked to a, a very educated man the other day. And I asked him, I said, are you saved? And he said, I hope so. 
So you all know it. And listen, that's one that we need to pray for because he don't know. Now, he may be saved and he may not be. He may be abiding, uh, not abiding with the Lord, or he may, he may be just lost. But the thing of it is, you can be assured this morning, if you're abiding and you have the, the desire to, to, to serve the Lord, and, and you have the uh, 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 help from the Holy Spirit t t t telling you and talking to you about your salvation, you're, you're, you're saved. And, and don't, don't let the devil get in and interfere with your living and, and, and try to get you to do something that you shouldn't do because he will. Yeah. And so this morning, these are some of the things. Now, in verse 7, notice here, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, ye shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, you can take that to the bank. You can believe that. You can pray for people. If you're in this condition, you can pray for people and help them. It may not be that you'll see the results of it, but listen, God hears that prayer. God knows that you're in fellowship with him. You're abiding with him. And listen, he will not, he will not tell you something and then do something else. God is, he is, is the old saying is he's true blue and what he says he'll do. And he says, if you abide, if you, if you continue to uh, serve me and pray unto me and, and do the things that I ask you to do, he says, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And in verse I want to read this. If I can, I think I got it marked. I want, I want you to see something in John 10, 25. John 10. I read it this morning. And I thought it was John 10, 25. Jesus answered and said, and answered them, I told you and you believe not. The work that I do in my Father's name they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And so that, this morning, here when he says this here, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. Here, he just backs it up again. And so in verse 8 of the, of the, of the lesson, Herein is my Father glorified. By making this, by doing this, he says here that herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And so it is pleasing to the Lord that you bear fruit, and that you bear it in a way that's pleasing to the Lord, and not for a show to the world, because there's a there's a whole sack full of them out there that they'll go out and they'll, they'll say, they'll get in front of people and try to be a witness to them to get the pats on the back. They have no desire. They don't, that's, that's not their purpose is to, to help you, but they want to make a show. They want to be, they want to be seen. Yeah. And here, this is, here in is the Father glorified. If you can be a witness to someone because you love them because you desire to see them uh, serve the Lord, because you want to see them come to church, whatever. He says, herein is my Father glory. You're glorifying the Father. And so this is one of the ways that you can abide in the Father. And he says, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciple. And over here, back in our lesson, where we were reading about if, 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 if the branch, in, in every branch of me that beareth not fruit. And here he's saying here, the Father is glorified 
will he bear much fruit. And so this is the reason why that the, the Lord will draw his fellowship away from you by uh, by this uh, uh, taking, the, taking the branch away. But this is what he's doing. He's drawing his fellowship away from you where that you will realize your need of him, where that you will miss him, where that you, you can't get a prayer answered. That's why he's bringing, he's drawing his fellowship away from you. He's not casting you out and saying, well, you're going to hell because you did this. No, because like I said, everyone that is, is saved is saved with an everlasting salvation. And so we do things, and that's the reason why that the Lord chastises. That's the reason why that sometimes he reaches down and, 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 he, and he gives us that little peck, you know, sometimes. Or the Holy Spirit comes to us and says, hey, you know, you, you shouldn't have done that. And so here, here we see this. Here is my Father glorified. So if I, if I, can, if I can bear a little fruit, I can glorify the Father. Now, in verse 9, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. So, again, here is this, this word abide. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. And people, this morning, uh, so many times we lose our joy. Some, so many times, you know, it, it just seems like, hey, the world's closing in on me and I can't, but listen, you can go back to the Father. You can a ask Him to, re to help you and to renew that joy, and it'll come back. But the thing of it is, if you look back in your life, you're not abiding as close as you should. And you're letting the world get in, into your life, and you're letting other things hinder you from serving the Lord. And we just, we just need to keep close tabs on ourselves because uh, it's a greater pleasure to serve the Lord and it is to serve the world. Now, <clears throat> he says in verse 7, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be fulfilled. This is my commandment. Now, he says up here, he says, If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Now here, this is my commandment, that you love one another. If you love one another, listen, everything's going to be all right. If you love one another, you'll do for them just like you would for your child or, or, or any other. That love for a brother and a sister spiritually is, is what he's talking about. He says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And how, how, how much did he love us? He gave his life for us. And he died on the cross of Calvary for us that we could obtain salvation, that we could be saved, that we, we could be in heaven with him. That's how much he loved us. And he says here, that's my commandment, that you love one another. And so this morning, uh, we need to love one another more than what we do. And instead of criticizing one another and finding fault with one another and seeing things that, that goes on in, in, in our lives, we need to just say, well, if it was not for the love of God, I would be there too. And you can see you can see people doing things and, and what's happening, they're not abiding. And they're out in the world and they're 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 in sin and they're saved. And you say, Well no, that don't yes it does work. It does. Because of what God's word says. He says, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. And, if, and, 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 and that which is born of God does not commit sin. So listen this morning. You can you can you can you can accept it or not, but this is what it is. God does not cast a person out from salvation. He does not throw him away. And so this morning, henceforth, in verse uh, uh, greater, well, let me look in, the, in verse twelve. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. 
greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for a friend. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. And so now you're not what you say a servant as much as you are a friend to the Lord Jesus Christ because you abide with him. And you stay in his stay in fellowship with him and you're his friend. And a friend is greater than a servant. So uh, henceforth, in verse 15, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. And so how has he made known to you? Well, you're looking at it this morning. His word. His word is true. And he's made all of this known unto us. And all we have to do is ask the Lord to help us with these things and show us these things and abide with him. Ye have not chosen me. And so many people want to thank the Lord. I, I, I chose you to be my Savior. No such thing. No such thing. Mankind has not got no authority to do anything in the spiritual realm. God chose you. And listen, you ought to be praising Him every day. You ought to be abiding with Him because He has chosen you. And you know in your heart this morning if God has spoke to your heart if He's chosen you. You know that. And you know this morning if you're not abiding close enough to Him. And so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's something that we need to do some soul searching and say, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk closer to you. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going with your help. I'm going to do that. And so here he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. And this morning, that's what we have to, that's what we have to live with. The world hates us. And they don't come out and say, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. But listen, they've got things and, 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 and laws and stuff like this. And, and, and eventually it's going to get worse. And Brother Larry's mentioned it. One day they may come in here and close this church down. But listen, that's all right too. Because God is still uh, with us. And he loves us. And he'll protect us. And uh, we'll go home and be with him. Remember the word verse 20. Remember the word that I say unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. And when people mistreat you and when people slur you and when people curse at you and all this, listen, that's what he said here, because they know not him to send me. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. If I had not come and spoken to them, they had not had, had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done, done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hate both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send, unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father. 
He shall testify of me. And that's the Holy Spirit of God that speaks to your souls and speaks to my soul and tells us the things that we are doing that's wrong. And he, he tells us, hey, you need to think about that and do these things. He says, even the spirit of truth which proceeds from God, ye shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Of course, uh, uh, from we are of the of of the Lord. We uh, we've been with Him ever since He saved our souls, and uh, the disciples were with Him when He was uh, when He was born or when He was called. By, and when he appeared uh, but listen we need to abide and uh, you, you keep that you think that think about that word abiding because it is the most important thing to be in the will of the Lord so I thank you this morning for listening I hope that something's been said uh, that will encourage you uh, you need we need to be encouraged because we have a wicked world to live in, and uh, it's a real time. But the thing of it is, we have the Father, and He's on our side, and He's our provider. So we thank you this morning for your attention.